My name is Pam Hart and I'm here to introduce a new subject to ACTV. The subject is spirit wind. What does spirit wind mean? Well, I'm lucky to have a guest with me here today who has been teaching spirit wind classes for the last 40 years. So with that, I'd like to introduce Rick Reich and I'd like you to just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I've been um, a minister for close to 40 years. Um, I, I've been retired for uh, close to 15 years, but I still do Spirit Wind, which I've uh, been doing, like you said, for nearly 40 years. And um, that's what we'll continue to talk about. Absolutely. So Spirit Wind is, from my understanding, kind of a class for spiritual adventurers. Is that what you would call it? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. What we do in Spirit Wind is we, uh, we explore all different kinds of spiritual subjects. Um, we look at different philosophies, different world religions, different spiritual paths. Um, and we do all of this without trying to proselytize anyone. Uh, we do it so that we promote understanding among people so that we really know what different people believe and why they believe those things. So every month there is a different subject that you try to cover. And yeah. How do you choose these subjects? Well, most most of the uh, topics that I that I choose have come from my own personal study. Um, when I went to seminary, uh, my my um, area of concentration was philosophy and world religions. So I already had studied world philosophy and world religions. So I'm you know, able to talk about all of those things, and then I studied other things in my doctoral work, uh, mainly spirituality and those kind of paths, yes. And every month is a wonderful topic. We just finished up with March holidays. Yes. And tell us a little bit about what that involved. Well, we just, uh, I just had an idea. It's March and there's a lot of holidays. Why don't we look at what, what the origin of the holidays were and what they meant? So we, I'm going to try to remember all the holidays we we looked at. Um, we looked at the, and this isn't in order, um, the uh, Jewish holiday of Purim. Uh, we looked at uh, uh, the uh, Muslim observance of Ramadan. Uh, we looked at St. Patrick's Day. Uh, uh, the neo-pagan holiday of uh, the spring equinox and then of course uh, this last week we've been dealing with the Christian Hol Holy Week. So do you have to be a specific religion to come to these classes? No, you, you, you can be any religion or no religion. I've had a number of people over the years uh, that have been atheists or agnostics but they just want to learn about things, you know. And so it, it's open to anyone. It is, are all the subjects about religion? No. Uh, for instance, uh, let's see. Yeah, in May, uh, it's going to be about women philosophers. Mm. Because I, I studied philosophy um, for two years, uh, going from ancient philosophy to contemporary philosophy. And uh, in that time, I never heard of one woman philosopher. Okay. <laughs> and I've read many histories of philosophy, and they never mention one woman philosopher. 
And yet in my own personal study, I found many. And um, so I'm going to talk about the women philosophers that have been overlooked. Well, that sounds pretty interesting yeah. to me. I can't wait till May. But uh, let's list some of the other classes that you've had in the last year. One of them was an introduction to Revelation, a yes. book in the Bible yeah. that is probably the most misunderstood. Yeah. And that was pretty interesting. Can you think of one major takeaway from that class? Um, well, the, the main thing I was trying to show in the class is that although the major trend today is to look at the book of Revelation and see it as have, having been all projected into the future in terms of what you read in the book of Revelation is all stuff that's going to happen at the end of the world. If you read it the, from the perspective of the, the first century when it was written and the people and what they were going through, you can see that it was a book written for them. Mm. It's not that we can't learn from it, mm. but it, I don't see that uh, there would, God would have all these people suffering as they were in the first century, those, the Christians, and then just kind of ignores them and talks to people in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another class that we had was about Native American spirituality. Yes. And that one was very interesting. And you even brought in a guest speaker yeah, for well, that one. On, on that, we do sometimes have guest speakers. And um, Stan Padilla came in and talked about Native American spirituality. He's done that for before for us as well. Yeah. We, and another, <laughs> kind of strangely enough, we also have a, a friend of mine, Michael Gorman, who's a... Uh, He's a modern-day Druid, and we've had him speak uh, to the group. So we do have guest speakers. Yeah. Well, I can remember we had love poems in February. Right. And we also looked at goddess religions. Mm -hmm. So this is quite an extensive repertoire of subjects mm -hmm. that is being covered in spirit wind classes and is is it like a class i mean can well, you describe it as far as the teacher and the students and that type of thing it, or? no it's not that uh, we've actually tried it in a number of formats you know um, at times it's been pretty large and and so we had to do it almost well we did it in a church building with the microphone up mm. in the front and people sitting in rows. That's not the way I particularly like it. Uh, right now we do it in a kind of a circle, but we do have tables uh, if people want to ride on to take notes, but for the most part, most people don't take notes even. Mm. You know, they, they're there just to listen, to hear, to absorb what they want. And I always tell people, regardless what topic, uh, we, we've touched on some controversial topics sometimes, like we looked at the whole witchcraft phenomena um, in ancient times and in, in its modern expression. Um, but we never say that people have to believe anything we talk about. It's only a matter of understanding what other people believe and then you can have respect from them, mm -hmm. respect for them. Yeah. So people ask questions and yeah, have it, dialogue. It's, it's like a discussion. Um, I mean, I do most of the talking, and so do our guest speakers. But again, I think the circle uh, lends itself to discussion, and people can ask questions anytime they want, and we do. And sometimes we get off on some tangents <laughs> that bring out some interesting things that none of us expected to right, talk about. Right, right, right. Everyone's yeah. learning. Well, this upcoming month you're having a new subject mm -hmm. in April. Would you like to talk about that subject? Sure. It's, it's um, another spiritual path. There's plenty out there. And it's called Creation Spirituality. And uh, Creation Spirituality is not the same 
and that is and it's not to be confused with creationism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Creationism is uh, the belief that God created the earth in seven days and close to six or seven thousand years ago. Um, that is not what creation spirituality is about. Creation spirituality is what many call uh, earth-centered spirituality mm -hmm. or a more, uh, some would see it kind of like with Native American elements of seeing the earth as sacred and speaking of earth as mother earth. Um, it lends itself to goddess religions uh, because it speaks of uh, uh, the divine feminine as well as sacred masculine. and. Um, and yet it also has many Christian elements in that uh, we draw on uh, many what we call the creation saints, people like Hildegard of Bingen and Meister Eckert and other of those. So that will start next week then, yeah, won't it? Yeah, next Tuesday. And you met April, and then you mentioned May about the women philosophers, and do you have a lineup for the rest of the months? Yes, I do. You want to tell us well, what that lineup might be? Well, actually, the, the reason why I did women philosophers in May um, was just because May has Mother's Day. Ah, right. So what I did is in June, I did the same thing. And so June is going to be um, called the Hidden Spirituality of Men, mm -hmm. and it's it's based on a uh, one of my professors in my doctoral program called the the book is titled that the mm -hmm. Hidden Spirituality of Men, and then um, after that we're going to do uh, a class on the history of ethics and morals. And then um, in August, uh, the spiritual teachings of Charles Fillmore. Okay. Um, then uh, in both September and October, we're doing a two-month series on the biggest question of all for us as humans, the meaning of life. Oh, my goodness. And, and we're going to solve that, aren't yeah, we? we're going to solve okay, it. Okay, two months and to then solve in, it. In November, we... Uh, I try to, every November, because that's Native American month, I will do it on Native American spirituality. And then in December, we'll close the year with um, a class on pre-Christian winter holiday traditions. So that's kind of what's coming up. Well, all of this spirit wind discussion and topics seem to help us get back to our roots in in some way and, and kind of figure out what our ancestors were doing and and how everything evolved into where we are today i think that's a very interesting way to explore yeah i th i think so too um some people come in uh you know they already have their views set mm -hmm. but they're willing to hear others then there are some people that come in that are just totally open and, wow, I'm going to see what happens. And, and maybe they walk away with something totally different from what they did before or believed before. So I think there's something there for anyone that comes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you often have um, representatives from other faiths come in to speak? Um, well, uh, we haven't, other, other than Native American uh, people, we've, uh, the only other time we've had people of other faith is we, uh, we did a, a series on the, the New Thought Movement. And we had uh, a practitioner from the, the Christian Science Church and as well as members who talked and told us about their experience and their beliefs. And then we had people from, uh, at that time it was called the Church of Religious Science, and um, they, the, 
minister of that church came and told us about Christian science and I mean yeah and then um, and then finally uh, we had chaplains from unity uh, talk about that those are three churches are pretty much um, uh, called uh, new thought churches mm -hmm. so anyway well, but I mean, we'd be, <laughs> I'd be willing to have Buddhists come, Hindus, anyone. It's just um, a matter of me knowing they're around and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So people can suggest sure. topics to you and, oh, yeah. and speakers. Uh, in fact, many times topics that I cover have are topics that have been suggested to me. And then so I will study them while I'm doing some other topic mm -hmm. and then present it like the next year or later on in the year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are an author also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the Creation Spirituality is one of the books right. that you have written. Yeah. Is it important for people to get that book ahead of time? Um, well, they could if they wanted. Um, uh, that I I don't write under my last my legal last name Reich. Um, I write under my this sounds strange under my birth name, uh, which is Kaikendall. And um, so all my books um, are published under the name uh, Richard Kaikendall rather than Richard Reich. The, the, just the reason for that was when I, my wife and I got married, um, I took her last name, her maiden name. So she didn't want mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's too hard to spell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's also a book on Spirit Wind, too. Right. There's a, what we did with that book, the Spirit Wind book, is we took topics from like about a year with each topic forming a different ch uh, chapter of the book. So we call it Spirit Wind the Book, <laughs> you know. And um, uh, I, in fact, a friend of mine was reading it right now, and they said, you know, the thing that's neat is um, it's not like you're reading the whole book about one thing, mm -hmm. and you can kind of flip around and say, oh, I'm interested in this, no, I'm not interested in that, or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. But it kind of gives a feel for people that aren't able to be at Spirit Win okay. of what we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you don't have a book for each of your 40 years of teaching no, Spirit no, Win. No, <laughs> no, that would be huge. <laughs> yeah, it would be huge, wouldn't it? Well, um, we've mentioned the Spirit Win class, mm -hmm. and I think we need to say when and where right. that's happens. Yeah. Uh, we actually meet at Unity of Auburn. Uh, you don't have to be a member of Unity of Auburn, uh, but that's where we meet. We meet on Tuesday evenings at 5.30. Wednesday. At, I'm sorry, Wednesday at, at 5.30, and it's just an hour long. And, uh, of course, like we said, there's discussion and questions and that. Anything else? Well, um, do you charge for this class? No, there, there's no charge for this class. Uh, sometimes people leave donations, but nothing is required of anyone. It's free to the community. Well, I think that kind of wraps it up, and I think that People could find more information on your Facebook page, probably. Too. Yes, I have a Facebook page that um, uh, you just go to Spare Wind, and it will pop and, up. And it'll pop up, yeah. On Facebook. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Rick, and we'll catch you next month on the topic for May. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.